Ok, welcome to that first class. In this lesson, we're gonna have a quick introduction to virtualization and how virtualization works. So, virtualization is a computing technique capable of running multiple operating systems on a single piece of hardware at the same time. A computational energy savings allows to a study of operating systems, programs, software development, networks and information security techniques. Also, virtualization significantly reduces the physical space within data centers since several services can be executed with a, with a much less volume of physical machines. Now, let's take a quick look at the history of VirtualBox. Then, VirtualBox initially uh, developed by Inotech after in 2007 uh, is launched an open source edition after Inotech is purchased by Sun Microsystems in 2008 after Oracle buys Sun Microsystems and all of these products in 2009 after the development keeps coming to the version 6 Currently, VirtualBox offers totally free versions for various platforms like as Linux, Mac OS, Windows, Solaris, and others. So that is it. Thank you very much and see you in the next class. Okay, nice. Welcome back. In this chapter 2, we will view how virtualization works. Hosted hardware or operating system and use it to run guest operating systems, creating a kind of computer within another computer. We have two virtualization types. And type 1 when a normally lightweight and a simplified system with a no graphical interface is used only to manage as a monitor or hardware, providing an efficient, robust and redundant infrastructure ready to receive virtual servers or VDI, widely used in servers and data centers. For example, Citrix Zen Server. Hyper-V, VMware ASXi, KVM, when you can view in the image on this side. Typo 2. When virtual machines need virtualization software run on top of an operating system commonly used for testing and isolating programs and networks, for example, VirtualBox, VMware Workstation, and others. You can view in this image, we did addict one uh, new layer, the layer host OS. This layer can be Windows, Mac or Linux. Okay, nice. This is a quick introduction in how virtualization work and types of virtualization. See you in next class. <music>
okay right in this class we will view how to download and install VirtualBox on your computer first step open your web browser you can use other web browsers entry address virtualbox.org on home page click download VirtualBox in VirtualBox platform packages select the package of your operating system in this case I will download OSX hosts you can close your web browser open download folder and double click on package wait for verification double click on virtualbox.pkg click next install enter your password ok now we installing VirtualBox on your computer this installation is very quick ok nice installation successful click close move to trash and ok in my launchpad VirtualBox is already for use in next class we are gonna download and install extensions package see you in the next class Thank you. Very well. Continuing the installation of VirtualBox, in this class, we're gonna install the extension package. First, access the web browser of your choice and type in virtualbox.org. Click on downloads link and click on VirtualBox Oracle VM extension pack all supported platforms. After download complete, click on package. Automatically, it opens the VirtualBox manager. When you click on install, the term license is shown. Go to end of this text and click agree. Enter the user password. You may no need to enter your password if it is Windows or Linux. And then extension package is installed and ready to start working here. We now have all the necessary tools to continue our course and other configuration activities in your VirtualBox. See you later. Hi, let's start now with an overview of the VirtualBox interface and how to use the application. For Windows user, press start and type VirtualBox or press Windows key and type VirtualBox. If you are on Linux, search the application menu of your system and if you are like me on macOS, access the launchpad and search for VirtualBox. So, as seen earlier, this is main screen when you open the application and here I have a list of all my virtual machines. There is no item because you just installed it, but all the virtual machines and group of virtual machines will be here in this area. Up here, I have a menu bar with more features that will see throughout the course, as network managers, plugins, devices, and others. Here in the main window, I can use these items in the virtual box that you can edit according to your taste. Click virtual box and click preferences. In the general tab, you can choose the location to save machines, the virtual disks, and the information of the virtual machines here are being saved in my directory but if you want to put them on a external hard drive or another disk on your computer at the input i can change the shortcuts you can use to manage such as vms and other virtualbox settings and update 
you can configure how updates can behave on network i can configure how adapters and physical files will behave within the virtual box we're gonna see more about that later in extensions i can add the other virtual box extensions packages and or package installed and the previous class is shown here so i can also install other extension packages and the last prox menu if you have a prox you can configure it here then in the next class we will understand all the details of creating a vm see you around In this class, we are going to create our first VM in the virtual box, and you will see the step by step how to do this. And the sequence, I'm gonna install Windows 10 to exemplify the installation of the operating system on the VM that we are going to create now. Click on New, enter the name of your VM. Below you can change the location where the VM will be saved if you want to change it. And here it is necessary to choose the type operating system that you will install on this VM. In this case, uh, Windows 10 64 bit. The link to the trial version is in the lesson description. Click continue. On this screen, we chose the amount of RAM that the VM will have. It is important not to exceed the green range. Click continue. And in this sequence, I have the VM's hard disk options, where we have three options. Leave the VM without a hard disk. Use an existing disk and finally the option we are going to select. Create a new disk now, then click create. In this window that opens, we will keep the VDI option and click continue. And here we keep the option dynamically allocated because in this option we can save the unnecessary use of physical storage. And then click on continue and choose the size of the disk we want in this bar. Let's go keep that recommended value and click create. And then our first VM is created. To make fine adjustments or if you change the settings we just made, we can click on this configuration button in the system. You can make changes to the processor and RAM as well as the VM startup request and storage. We can add more hard drives and the virtual machine or other connected storage controllers. In audio, it is possible to configure the audio inputs and outputs inside the virtual machine if you need to. In network, you can change the adapters and add more network cards and configure how they will work. We will keep it in the net mode for now. This is one of the part more important we will take about this in the next classes. In showered folders, it is possible to define which folders that are on my physical machine will be shared with the VM. This is a good option to transfer and work files to get between the VM and the host. Anyway, let's click OK and turn on the created VM. To start the VM, click on this green arrow button. When starting the VM for the first time, this screen is displayed. Where I will choose the ISO file. I said before, the link for a direct download for Microsoft is the lesson description. So just click here. Here. and select the windows 10 image and it automatically start loading the installer our fox is now to teach the formatting of the operating system so the video is gonna be accelerated in that part
So Windows 10 is ready to use. You can use it normally for any activity you want. Okay, see you at the next class. Welcome to another class, in which we're gonna understand how groups of virtual machines work. Well, first of all, open your VirtualBox Manager. The function is to organize visually and also on the host how should these machines gonna be organized on the physical hard disk. We already have our machine created in the previous class, so to understand the concept behind it, I will create some more VMs. Click on New. A VM called Holder, Linux type, continue, continue, create a new hard drive, uh, VDI continue, continue, create, and uh, okay, a new machine called Server, type Linux, continue, 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 VDI continue, and create and finally another one called Windows Server type your Windows continue continue create continue continue and create okay so we have our VMs created and now we are going to organize them into groups. One to store the infrastructure and other to store the network clients. First, click on the VM on the left side. Press the control key if it's Windows and the command key if it's macOS. And then click on the other VM that will be part of that group. After that, just go to the menu bar and click machine after click group option. And here we have the first group created. To rename it, just click the right button and click on rename and change to a new name. In this case, we'll be called infrastructure. Once this is done, we're gonna do the same for the other two. Press in command or control and click in group, right button, rename group. And this time it will be called client networks. To under our group, just click with the right button and then group simple and faster so that's it the group help organize the files if we go to the personal folder and open VirtualBox VMs folder we can see that files the virtual machines were organized in the same way So that's it for now and I see you in the next class. Welcome back. In this chapter, we're gonna understand how snapshots work. The snapshot is a kind of a screenshot of the VM if you want to make any changes to guess the system and then go back to the previous stage without formatting again. Just create a snapshot. It is a timeline with several restart points, giving us security and also agility because it is possible to create a clone of a VM from a snapshot without having to format a new VM just using the snapshot as a template. So here we go, create a snapshot. Click on VM where the snapshot is will be taken. 
then click on this icon and then snapshots on this screen just click on the create button give the snap name like as first snapshot if you need you can put a description here click ok and so here is our first snap and from here i can create a clone click on the ship dolly i think i understand that reference and it is also possible to start from the snap without considering the changes after it was created bye and see you soon In this lesson, we're gonna understand the five types of VM status. The first is turn it off the way it will be when it is created. In the pause type, it is when the machine is on and I want to pause what it is processing to continue from where I left off. It is like blocking the screen, for example. In the save machine state, it is possible to shut down the VM keeping the session and what was running work in the same way as the hibernate option. In ACPI shutdown, a shutdown signal is sent, the same as that set when we press the power button when the computer is on. And the last option, power off. When we force the shutdown, it is important to use this option only when necessary, as it can damage the guest operating system. To exemplify, I gonna install Ubuntu desktop. Here below, I left you the download link. To download, just open your browser, go to ubuntu.com, click on download, and then on this Ubuntu desktop option. While the download complete, I'm gonna quickly create the virtual machine and we're gonna test the shutdown options. Clicking new Ubuntu desktop, keep Linux, keep Ubuntu 64 bit, continue, 1 GB RAM, continue, create new hard drive, or VDI, continue, continue. I'm gonna change it for 20 GB. create and okay okay download is finished and let's go to install it In this part, I'm gonna speed up the installation process.
Now, with Ubuntu installed, we're gonna test the shutdown options. Start with the pause. Got it. Click in menu bar on machine pause. The screen is in shade of gray symbolizing the pause activated and when we come back as you can see it remains where it left off to test the save machine state i'm going to click on close button and a pop-up is presented when choose the save machine stage option and okay the machine gonna be completely turned off as you can see and i can even turn off my physical computer that when i turn on again the vm will continue we were left off including showing here in the thumbnail the last screen of the vm to start again just click on start and to discard the saved stage just click on discard on the other hand shut it down in this case of ubuntu works but no all guest operating system will accept this type of shut it down i'm gonna start it again for show you the last option and lastly we have the power off for test it i'm gonna click on the close button select power off the machine and click ok this option which forces the shutdown of the vm and ok we stop here i hope you are enjoying this powerful tool see you around <music>
Okay, the process has been completed. And now to go the other way and import the, and apply. Let's go to the menu bar again. Click on File, Import Appliance. And here in this window that opens, we're going to keep this option. And here, click on Open and select the Over File Created. Click Continue. Note that all the VM information is here. And to proceed, just click on Import. And let's wait to the process to end. And here we have Ubuntu Desktop 1 because we already have a machine with that name. The number 1 was added in the front. And if we start this VM, we're gonna see that it is already ready for use. So that's it. See you soon. Welcome back. In this chapter, we're gonna understand the Virtual Media Manager, a VirtualBox tool to manage the virtual hard drives of your VMs. To access it, go to the menu bar, File, and click on Virtual Media Manager. In this window that opens, I have all the hard drives available, and I have this button to add, which serves to add a hard drive brought from another host or server, where I can connect to a VM later, the VirtualBox accepts VDI, VHD, or VMDK, which can come from different platforms, like VMware, for example. In the Create button, you can create a new hard drive. In this Copy button option, I can copy a hard drive and have a copy of it. This button, Optical Disks. I have another interesting option, is the one that manages the available .isos images that I will be able to connect later. Even the images we already use are here. So, going back to the Drives option, and clicking in Properties. By clicking on each one, I can see down here, clicking in Information, I can see here where it is being used, its size and other informations. That's basically it. This is subject is very simple to understand. Then see you in the next class. Okay, right. Cloning virtual machines. This is a procedure that exists inside the virtual box capable of creating clones in two formats. The type 1 linked when the cloned machine shares the disk with the copy and the two full clone when the machine is completely copied each remaining is an independent vm with equal characteristics this is very good to use when you need a serial machine with the same operating system to do some test or study and you don't want to be formatting and creating one by one save the time and the patience to test this function Let's click on the machine we want to the clone. Go to the menu bar and click on machine and then on clone. Choose the name of the new VM here. In this option, reset the MAC address and click on proceed or continue. And on that screen, we have both types of cloning. In this case, I'm gonna make a complete clone because I want two independent machines and we're gonna wait for the process to finish. Okay, ready? 
and now if we go to the VirtualBox directory we can see that we have here the files of this machine and going back to the previous one we also have hairs created here different from what would happen in a linked one so that's it see you next class hi what's up in this chapter we are going to talk about network operation this is a very important issue within VirtualBox as it is necessary to understand to the modes of the network operations to choose the best option according to your need when working with VMs in this first part I will introduce you to these concepts and in the second part we're gonna see how each one works in the practice the first mode of operation is net which even works the same as net found in professional firewalls it does address conversion as we can see in this image this square represents virtual box and when receiving an IP on the router, it does the conversion of addresses and releases that to the VMs, giving them access to the internet I have rolled in inside the virtual box. Another network option is bridge. As the name suggests, it creates a bridge between the physical interface on the host making the physical router on my network believe that my virtual machine is a physical computer on the network having access to all their devices on the network uh, physical networks such as router switches computers servers and etc we have yet another model which the internal network where the virtual box creates a kind of network with access only within the virtual box as if a switch and a router connected all the VMs configured in this way and finally we have the option host only where communication is created between the VM and the host where they can communicate with each other okay so let's practice this now and see how each of these networks works with my windows 10 machine turned on i go to the menu bar and select the machine and then settings in this window that opens we go to the network and here the vm is configured with net which is the default when creating a vm in the virtual box to see this inside the windows we will open a terminal and inside it enter the command ipconfig as we can see we received an ip 10.0.2.15 that is provided by virtualbox and on my physical computer on network i receive it of my physical role there this ip so this ip was provided by the application so okay back in machine settings and configurations again and selecting network and changing a uh, net for bridged adapter and second choosing the attached on my wi-fi adapter clicking ok and returning on the vm a new network was received here and going back on the terminal and running again ipconfig we can see that it is already connected to my physical network and our functional configuration as expected well to test the internal network which is another mode of operation let's go back to the settings machine 
settings click in on network and network mode chose to internal network and in name keep it internet okay so this icon is chanting here on the windows 10 but i have a network no identified because this network don't have holders or other devices for uh, giving to this machine an ip configuration for dacp this option is very interesting to test network because you can configure all their vm with firewall or roller or dacp server or all their applications and you can test different different environment in networks and this option is really really interesting to test these options because the internet uh, works like a, a physical switch connecting various VMs in a single network and finally to configure it as host job, just go back to the VirtualBox manager click on VirtualBox preferences network and click on aid button for make changes just double click on this option and here I can configure DHCP server and other options. So we keep these options, clicking OK and OK again. And let's go back to our VM. Clicking on machine settings and then click on network button. And this option change to host only adapter here we have our host only network and then click on ok note this icon is changing going back to our vm we can again to a, a test running ip config note that it already received an ip in the same range that we configured in virtualbox so these are the network operations within the virtualbox each for a different need according to your environment that is it for this class i will see you in the next class hi welcome back in this chapter we're gonna talk a little bit about uh vbox guest editions this package works like about an interceptor behind vm and my host computer when you install the vbox editions we can improve several tools inside the virtual box and the communications the vms each other we're gonna see how to install it on windows and how to install it on linux first i'm gonna start my windows 10 And I gonna start my Ubuntu Linux. So okay, all my system is is on, and first I gonna install it on Windows. For it, select devices and select insert guest edition CD image. The Windows notice here. Click that. Click open files. And here I have all these files inside the CD. Then 
double click on VBox Windows Editions. Click yes. And next, next, install, install. And okay, it installed successfully. And click on finish and the VM will be restarted and and while it restart let's go to the install on ubuntu desktop so select the this window select devices insert guest additions and click on run enter your password and the package is installing right now and okay press enter so the window successful restarted and when i click on right button on start menu and click on devices manager we can see here the virtual box graphics adapter was installed and the box hard disks on some other devices are successful installed on our VM. So now I can resize this window and the VM uh, automatically resizes according my window resizing. So okay, I'm gonna power off this machine. So that's it. See you at the next class when I'm gonna show you all their tools behind the VirtualBox guest edition. See you later. Hi, welcome to another class. In this class, we're gonna talk about clipboard. Yes, clipboard works over the VM and host machine. This is a powerful tool for copy clipboard behind your workplace. This help you strongly in your day by day. Let me show you how this work in our VM. First, we need configure on device uh, clipboard and select bidirectional and other function is device drag and drop and bidirectional so okay now i can transfer behind the clipboard files and clipboard over the vm and host machine using the drag and drop i can copy this picture only clicking and holding and leave here so it's working okay other tool is copy the clipboard behind the machines for it i'm gonna copy this text and here in your vm open the notepad right button paste and all texts are here i can copy links to opening web browser for example and copy this link so it's working okay so that's it see you at the next class hi welcome to another class in this class we're gonna talk a little bit about shared folders uh, shared folders in VirtualBox is a very important tool for transfer files over the VM and host machine. You can transfer behind local network, but this is a very powerful tool for transfer files too. So let's go to the VirtualBox for review how this tool works. First of all, start your VM. 
in my case i'm gonna use the windows 10 this too needs the virtual box guest edition for works okay for activate uh shared folders let's go to the machine settings and click on sharded folders icon here we don't have folders for create a new shared folder click on this add button select this folder i'm gonna create a new folder on my desktop a folder colored test so okay this folder has been created here and select open select out mount and make permanent and okay and okay sure back in again in our machine click on file explorer and here we have a new shared folder mounted automatically with task name so opening this folder is this empty but we're gonna make some tests first i'm gonna create a new test file call it test vm so okay going to our host system and open the folder we have a new file call it test vm if i copy some file for this folder this file is automatically created here and i can manage these files in the host machine and two in the vm so that's it this still works in the windows linux or other systems that you install your virtual box and see you in the next class <music>to this class In this class we're gonna see how to usb devices works on the vms when you turn on your vm you can see below this usb icon in this icon you need to click with right button for start any device connected at your physical computer in my case i have an usb audio device on one pc camera apple keyboard and usb mouse and whatever so to connect for example my usb pc camera on my vm i need just click on this device so here in our vm this device is configuring right now if i right button on start menu and devices manager i can see here this device is installed successful here uh, here ready for use so that's it for connect different types of devices just click on this option with right button if you're turning the configuration you can use the option usb settings and here you can configure serial port and usb port you can connect it directly on your vm storage devices put and output devices and so that's it see you at the next class
so welcome to another class this is our last class where we talk a little bit about vbox manage this is a powerful tool for create and manage our vms throughout the command line for see it work i'm gonna open our vtolbox manager but it's not necessary i'm only opening it for a re see how this command works and i need open my terminal if you are on linux you you gotta open your terminal if you are on windows open your command prompt or your powershell if you are on mac os like me just open your terminal so just in here and okay for enter these comments you no need enter with administrator okay then let's go the first comment is vbox manage list vms so okay here i have this vm windows 10 it is this vm and here we have ubuntu desktop it is this vm and here i have our uuid this command only lists all vms created on our host computer enter clear to clear our screen and second command is a command for list all vms running so enter vbox manage list running vms we don't have any vm turned on for see it i'm gonna enter other command a command for start vm for it enter vbox manage start vm this command start uh, some vm if you want and enter type headless this option only start your vm but your vm don't open a new window it's only work in background and finally your vm name in this case we're gonna start this vm ubuntu desktop so okay this is our command hit enter and this vm is running you can see this vm is powered on but we don't have a new window with this vm so for view the vms running i run again vbox manage list running vms and here we have ubuntu desktop this vm started right now so enter clear again for clear or terminal and we're gonna power off this started vm for it enter vbox manage control vm enter the vm name in this case ubuntu desktop and acpi power button with this command we're gonna shutting down our vm but i have other command for shutting down our vms this is a power off command and hit enter so this vm is powered off with the power off the machine is forced to shut it down so enter clear to clear our terminal and okay other very important command is to manage snapshots for this enter vbox manage snapshot enter the vm name in this case ubuntu desktop take for take a new snapshot and enter the snapshot name in this case snap class and hit enter so here we have a new snapshot call it snap class if i click this button 
and snapshots i have here all snapshots created on this vm and here i have our last snapshot created right now so okay for restore a uh, snapshot i only use the option restore here so i gonna restart for this snapshot working with appliance for this enter the snapshot name here okay and hit enter and here we have a new snapshot applied successfully so enter clear to clear our terminal and other very important command is export and import appliances for it let me see how directory we are in okay i'm gonna change it for my desktop clear and okay for export and applies behind the terminal command we only need enter this command vbox manage export vm name in this case ubuntu desktop o parameter and applies name in this case applies dot over and okay hit enter so we have here uh progress and here we have a new file has been created So this VM is successfully exported and our last comment of today is a comment for import VM through the applies for it enter vbox manage import dot over file in this case we're gonna use this same over for it enter applies dot over v sys zero vm name and here we need enter a new name for this vm imported in this case ubuntu imported so okay hit enter and our vm our has been created we're only gonna wait this process to finish so okay this process are finished and here we have our vm imported working very very good i gotta power it off this enter clear and okay of course we have several commands to use in the terminal you have make several operations uh, throughout these comments but this is only a demonstration about this powerful tool you can use other interesting software with VirtualBox like Hashcop Vagrant for example which is a great software to quickly deploy and destroy machines widely used by developers worldwide then that's it our course ends here I hope it has contributed to your learning and and that this is just a step towards your research in the VirtualBox world which has a lot to contribute to the career of developers, hackers, software testers, and network administrators, among other professionals. My English is uh, literally limited as it is not my mother tongue, but I'm concentrating my 
effort on improving it sorry about this don't forget to leave your evaluation of this course because your feedback is very important to me because through it i improve my content see you later